It's not an auction, but an exhibition. And yet the works of art here are rock-bottom prices. That's just one of the things that have caught the audience's attention. <laughs> Veteran actress Jocke Silva opens the door to the affordable art show so the viewers can feast their eyes and add to their collection. Then the massive works of art greet them. We have like about over 200 works, including miniatures and sculptures. We have um, wooden sculptures and metal spoon sculptures. From paintings which are done in different techniques, capturing sights and breathtaking scenarios, just the expression of of the of the baby really caught my attention because um, the the baby is just full of she's she's my cousin, so she's just full of um, a lot of artistic expression, every point in time she has something unique she's doing. So at that moment I just captured her and then I felt like putting it together as an artwork. For sculptural pieces in metal, wood, clay or even a medley of all sorts, they're all here. Works here were carefully chosen. While they were, you know, creating them, some of them sought counsel, you know, uh, advice, and the uh, critique which we offered easily. And uh, what you are seeing today is the end product of that. It's, it was a very intense period of production that went through stringent professional uh, critique. You know, we looked at who they trained under. So, you know, we have a few who trained at Universal Studios with Mr. Um, Olaku, who was a great help with this um, show. And, you know, we also, also artists that we worked with, you know, artists that we've held the exhibitions in the past in the gallery. So, you know, there were some that we're familiar with. And then we also looked at, um, you know, just things that caught people's attention, you know, different things. And it's also, you know, young people are also into contemporary arts as well. So we selected some from contemporary arts. For the owner of the gallery, it has always been a passion to collect and showcase good art and artists. But for her, the bigger picture has always been to make more people art collectors. We really pretty much to uh, make words uh, works affordable because you know when we have young collectors, the best way to um, attract them is with affordable arts. So that was the whole point of having this affordable art show. The Belief is a luxurious lifestyle tailored for the affluent. But this show is trying to demystify such perceptions. A lot of the masters, their, their struggles in finding their expression, their form of expression, came to be their signature. You know, um, I believe that quite a lot of the works here today are going to be bought. For those that are not bought, they shouldn't despair. They should just keep at it. Ideologically, artists are the rich and the wealthy. I think this is a good opportunity for the upcoming lovers of art, collectors to have access to collect a pixel to at affordable price. In a room full of art, from top to bottom, how do you really take a pick? Kekemaras have been with us for quite a while, but they haven't been in our, in our paintings that often. You know, you see quite a few of them in this, in some of these works, and you know, and that's the, the chronicling of, you know, like all artists, the chronicling of their reality, you know, of the reality of their time. I mean, all the artists were one family, and you see that uh, usually, if not always, we, we visit our colleagues' exhibition and see 
you know, what they are doing and how they are going about it. And if you do that, you're also improving yourself because what you see might influence you. And then talking about colors, I don't really have I don't really have a particular color I I work with because the colors on each work is determined by by the by the reference I have to use to do the work. And the artists who created some of the works feel a rush of excitement to see how it all comes together. The works coming from the younger artists, they are wow. It's, it's a good one and I really like the idea by my dream, bringing the younger artists to to the surface for people to see them. It's, it's really a wonderful idea and the exhibition, it's a good one. There are a lot of lessons for the little ones as well. One of the projects of uh, My Dream Gallery to help to develop you know, uh, the career careers of young talented artists you know we're in a, a very peculiar environment where which is a bit hostile to creative enterprise and um, some of them when discovered at this stage uh, are guided you know there's a blueprint for success and I'd like they say guided to help them realize the full potential as uh, professional artists because essentially is the professional artist that fits uh, the market of the art industry. And this is one of the projects aimed at uh, discovering more future masters you know, uh, within the art industry. Art patrons believe an investment in art is one that never goes wrong. So it's a win-win situation for the artist and the collector. has gone out for one of Africa's finest hands. Born in 1934 in Alu, in the Kwe local government area of River State, South-South Nigeria. Eleti Amadi attended Government College Umahia, Abia State in 1948 before proceeding to the University of Ibadan where he obtained a degree in physics and mathematics. He worked as a land surveyor and later was a teacher at several schools including the Nigerian military school, Zaria. Amadi served in the Nigerian army, remained there during the Nigerian civil war and retired at the rank of captain. He then held various positions with the River State Government, including the Permanent Secretary, Commissioner for Education and Commissioner for Lands and Housing. So, where did writing fit in? It came at the peak of his academic career as writer in residence and lecturer at the River State College of Education, where he has also been Dean of Arts, Head of the Literature Department and Director of General Studies. The literary world was lost for words when the news of his death hit the airwaves. Many would remember his works like The Concubine, Great Ponds and Sunset in Biafra, which molded great minds during their formative years.